like the I mean obviously you've been generous with him, but does he ever feel like I mean I imagine you made some deal with money out of Friday Lights. Does he ever feel sort of like you took advantage of him in any way? He's I, I mean, he's never expressed that. There may be guilt on my part that somehow I took advantage of him, which I did not. But you know, I think there is this sense. There was there was definitely a sense of one of the kids that you know, hey, you took advantage of me. You know, you use use my story, and I didn't get a, I didn't get a dime, and you reaped all these rewards. That isn't why I give Booby money, and he's never he's never brought that up. I I give him money in the hopes of somehow reviving. Uh, his life, and uh, but there is one kid who does have resentment about that. But Booby has never, never brought that up. Which kid was it? Uh, Ivory Christian. TCU. Uh, excuse me. The one who went to TCU. Yes. Yes. All right. Anybody else? Come on. There's a ton of people here, and these are interesting human beings we have here. <laughs> I got a follow up. <laughs> sure. Follow up, sir. Oh, okay. Um, oh, is there someone in the back? Yes. Yes, go ahead. Hit. No, I was going to say, uh, this has nothing to do with Will Leach standing there, but did, did covering the Cardinals for, like, one whole year, did that have anything? Did it suck your soul? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's going to get him into heaven, by the way, actually. But, De uh, dealing with La Russa, did, did that make you want to slit that. your wrist at all? I'm sure it made him a better person, but I'll let Buzz answer. <laughs> No, actually it didn't. I mean, you know, you get to know Tony, and, and when, when you have the luxury of writing a book, the great thing is you don't have to file every day. It's sort of like what Dan said, you know, he doesn't have to worry about doing the game story um, and can write about vomit. Uh, <laughs> and I must say, you wrote about it very well, actually. <laughs> it's not the only time I've written about vomit. Uh, so after, after a loss, you know, there was... The, trying to talk to Tony was hopeless because he was grumpy and mopey and, and, and everything else. But uh, when Tony is relaxed, which he is not often during the season, but when he is relaxed, he is charming, he is actually funny, and he's a very intellectually complex man. So I ended up, uh, frankly, liking him uh, quite a bit. But after a loss, he could just be absolutely miserable and just wanted to run away and get the hell out of the clubhouse, which is what I did. Because you know it would be these monosyllabic one-word answers, of which none of which were helpful at all. All right, next, yes, sir. Um, do any of you three bloggers up there? Um, I mean, I know that you you all sort of thought that Buzz overreacted, but did you take any lessons from what he had to say on Costas now? Um, uh, I'm probably the person to answer this last. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I can't answer that. No, I, I learn nothing from anything that anyone says to me. I, really <laughs> I don't. People are like, God, you say fuck too much. I say fuck more. And they're like, God, you're such a you're such a sexist. And then I just say pussy more. And, oh, it's horrible. No, I, I uh, you know, I think I think that the things that that Buzz brought up, particularly cruelty, uh, which I think is. A particularly fair point because I think a lot of times in blog comments, a lot of times people will will say things that are extremely mean to one person, and it's easy enough to write off as "oh, hey, I'm just letting off some steam" or whatever. But there is another real person on the end of that who has feelings, I would imagine. And so, um, I, I think you have to be, I think you have to take very, very great care in making sure that what you're saying isn't just mean, but that it has value beyond being a critique or something like that, if that makes any sense. I, I don't know that I'm ever successful at that. In fact, I'm probably <laughs> the least successful human being that's ever attempted such a thing. Um, but I, I do think that, that I, I think that what happens on blogs is, I think that a lot of times, particularly on celebrity blogs, they are the worst by far, is that you see you see a lot of comments that are very hurtful and very mean-spirited and have no real value, and they end up, I think that in general, the audience tends to be very self-editing. In other words, I don't, think a lot of the, I don't think a lot of those comments get a lot of traction. I think a lot of people ignore them, and a lot of those people fade into the ether, and it's just a lot of desperate cries from people who are trying to say mean things because they have nothing else to say. So that's all I have to say. For the record, like you know, I, I feel like you know, I, I, Dan, I'm gonna pass over to you in a moment because Dan, I've, I've always thought that Dan would have been the ideal person. No offense to Braylon Edwards, who, who was awesome apparently until he was on that show. By the way, he was absolutely amazing until he got he ruined his career. Yeah, he really did. He was unbelievable last year. 
Um, but you know, I, and I, you know, I, and, I, and I know that there are different viewpoints on this. But I'll be honest with you, like uh, my general mindset is, I'm aware that everyone is human beings, and I know one wants to hurt another human being. It is also worth noting, in my opinion, that this is entertainment, and I think that we. It doesn't mean there are not human stories behind entertainment. It doesn't mean that these are not regular people. But nevertheless, you know, I mean, we pay for all of this. And I, and I know that this is not, I know that not everyone agrees with this. And I, I, I don't even disagree with those who disagree with this. But as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even disagree with those who disagree. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a uniter, not a divider. But uh, I, I do believe that, like, Yes, there's a lot of, uh, as you say, Drew, there are, there are a lot of comments that are meaningless, a lot of that are dumb. That doesn't mean they're, they're not wrong. That doesn't mean they're wrong to make. I think everybody has the right to do this stuff because, you know, I mean, this is entertainment. And, and at a certain level, you know, if you don't want, in my, in, in my uh, belief on this, if you don't, uh, if you want all the good stuff, with becoming a famous person and an athlete and rich or whatever you want to do, you have to deal with the bad. And it's not fair sometimes, and it's ugly sometimes, but this is the way it works. And I, and I think that like we can say whether it's good, we can say whether it's bad, we can say whether uh, it's fair, we can say whether it's not fair, but this is the world that we live in. And I think, I think if you pretend that it's not the case, then I, I, would, I would love to see someone it's pretty rare anymore that you get a Steve Carlton, a guy that, uh, in addition to owning Nazi memorabilia, um, uh, <laughs> which he did, um, but uh, pretend he didn't and think of him as a sympathetic fellow. Um, the, the, the idea that like you're just a guy that wants to pitch and you're just a guy that wants to play baseball and go home. And those guys are there, you get your Greg Maddoxes, you get your so on. But honestly, at a certain level, in my opinion, if uh, if you um, if you want us to drink your shitty sports beverage, then you get blowback for that. As far as I'm concerned, we are the consumers, and we are the ones that pay for all of this. And I know that uh, that people disagree with that, but I, 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 th that's kind of my take on the matter. Is that like if you're in the public eye, this is what the public eye means these days. And maybe it's fair, maybe it's not. But to pretend otherwise, I think is uh, is is ignoring kind of the way media works right now. So there, Dan.